Hi, I'm the Grow Boss. I write the Grow Book and Equipment Guide, and I'm here in Big Red's garden, and we're gonna do a garden rescue. And this is their veg, so I thought this would be a good place to start. We'll go from the bottom up, we'll evaluate what's going on here, and then we'll move into flower and see what's going on there. So let's start with what they've got. It's a 400 watt, eight bulb, four foot T5. Each bulb's 54 watts, 5,000 lumens for 40,000 lumens spread over a two by four space. And I have half the lights off because it gets a little bright with the camera and the lights. So we're gonna run it at 216 watts while I show you a couple of things about the garden. And first, look at the tops. All the top leaves are face up. It's not too much light. They're not curling under. Even the ones on the outside edge are reaching in and facing the light. Why? Because plants are phototropic. They know where the light is and they can turn toward it. And when we look at the lights, when we look at the top of the plants, you can see the leaves are flat. They're light green. You can see the light through them on, when, you, when you hold them up to the light. They've got nice offshoots they're bushing out. There's not too much purpling. You're always going to have purple in a healthy garden. The number one problem in a healthy garden is always not enough magnesium. But before we go on to the flower garden, I really want to show you this and it's some simple math. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 plants under a 400 watt light. So what? Each plant can be 30 watts big. That's 390 watts worth of plant. Remember, you can't grow 401 watts worth of plant under a 400 watt light. Why? Because light is the fuel that drives the photosynthesis equation. Remember, combining water and CO2, using light for energy, they make sugar and oxygen. And nowhere in that equation does nutrients exist. So light is the fuel that drives the equation of plant growth. Always can't have too much because then the plant can't grow into the light, can't have too little because then they get thin and sparse and you don't get enough nodes. So when you look at these right up front, you can see that they're branchy, that they're coming up. And we're gonna trim these up a little before we go on, but you can see how nice and branchy they are. And they're real short, like this one right here, we can count one, two, three, four, five, six tops, seven, eight, nine. Mm, some of these we're gonna trim in a minute, but this plant has at least eight good tops and it's only one foot tall because, well, really we are going to uh, pull the bottoms off and strip it down. And we'll go over that in a sec. But even just right here doing it like this, you can already see, oh, I hear big red whimpering in the background, me pulling on this plant. So even here when we strip it down a little and we just clean it up because you're never going to use this. Remember, bugs come from the bottom up. So you can already kind of see it's ne you're never going to want what's in here. And just from a quick cleanup, we already have a much better idea. Now that's not defoliating the plant. I am not taking all the leaves off the plant. All I did was refocus her energy because you've seen the pictures later in flower. This branch grows this little tiny nug later in flower and you either should have got rid of it brought or brought it up, but you would want that nug that's down here up on top. Besides, this is where bugs come from. So even like this branch, ah, we'll get more into that in a minute. But what I want to get back to is each of these plants can grow 30 watts big. We have 13 plants at 30 watts. If you want it to grow, you can see, I'll turn on all the lights, you can see it's the, the soil is dark, well, the cocoa is dark, right? The cocoa is not getting light. So this is as much penetration as all of these bulbs can give us. And that's important because if we strip this plant, it penetrates deeper, but we're running out of light. Now, if we just removed a couple of plants and we stretch these out into the light, well, oh, there's a little surprise. Well, they would grow bigger because now we have two, four, six, eight, nine, 10 plants. And if we have 10 plants under a 400 watt light, well, we can grow 40 watt plants. And if we have eight plants under a 400 watt light, we can grow them 50 watts big. And if we had six plants, of course, we would have to wait two weeks until they grew bigger. But if we had six plants, they could all grow almost 70 watts big. 
So that's the idea. Now, something else to consider. Ooh, this one needs to be watered. Something else to consider. This plant, let's say that we have 10 plants under a 400 watt light. That means each plant can grow 40 watts big. But you can see this plant's a little bushy, right? So let's say this plant is 50 watts big. So if I were to trim 10 watts off the bottom, 10 watts worth of plant from the bottom, then this plant would now be 40 watts big again. So we strip the bottom down. Oh, and I know when you guys watch my garden rescue, you, you leave me those, I'm gonna stab the grow boss if he treated my plant like that. But trust me, so we're gonna reduce this plant, leave the leaves, take out the, take out the growth shoot so it can only grow taller. So if we take 15 watts off this plant, some from the bottom, um, we might even, see how oh, there's two top, this top, we might even take a top from it. Anyway, so now if we've reduced this plant to let's say 30 watts, but it's still under 50 watts worth of light, then this plant can stay under this light for another week or so. Think about it like shifting gears, top a third, bottom a fourth. What are we really talking about? Five, 700 RPM, but there's a lot of power there. So if we had 10 plants at 40 watts each, eight plants at 50 watts each, we strip them down to 35 watts. Well, this is now a 35 watt plant, again, under 50 watts worth of light. So there's room for it to grow. And that's super important as we shift from veg into flower. And now let me go over some trimming. Okay, so I've chosen the best five plants I think that'll represent a good trim to get these started, keep them bushy, and fill in the flower garden. So I'm gonna start with this one and we'll just kind of work our way through it. And blah, blah, blah. Here's a little thing, we'll do a little bend and break. See how these are too tall and it's a V and the bottoms aren't coming up? Just go ahead and twist it and stop, soften up the inner herd. Bend it over and take the top so the branches have to come up. This one will be a little awkward, but you can see this one's way bushier, so I'm gonna try to get this one to catch up to it. So we're gonna give the middle branches a chance to come up and out by cleaning away everything that we don't want and bending the two tops down like this. And that will give these inner nodes a chance to turn up and really start to branch. Because remember, the, the topmost branches, the one that gets the most light are where the plant directs her energy. So if you take the top and bend her over, she's forced to let all these, she's forced to put her energy into all these little inner node spaces. So this one, it kind of is what it is, right? We'll just leave it here like that. Move on to the next one. And this one is way more obvious. This little fuzz down here, nothing's ever going to come out of it so there's no point in keeping it now so let's start by trimming away some of the fuzz because this is only going to die later anyway trim some of it and we can get a better look at it um i don't even think we're going to be keeping this one or this one this one won't come up probably nothing in the middle because this is a good looking plant all right, so this one won't come up. This node won't go anywhere. This node. So the inside of the small bushes like this, they don't go anywhere. So what we're really looking for is just our tops. Here's a top like this. That, those will come up and we'll get that by bending the, this one down and we'll cover it up with one of the other branches and we'll allow that one to come up. See, here's two nodes that might come up because it's kind of even with the top. And here's a couple of nodes that'll come up if we twist the top down. And here's a node right in the center that'll come up. Okay. 
We'll do the same thing with this one. It's obvious that there's a couple of runaway tops and I know it's hard to do, but if you want the plant to keep up, we are going to have to take that top. Ooh, no, no one ever likes that. You have to make a clone out of it. But if you're trying to give the middle ones a chance to catch up, then sometimes you have to sacrifice the top. And now this branch can come up and this branch and this branch and they will catch up to these two. And suddenly at the same height or a little higher, we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, these ones down here, I didn't start trimming yet. So let's see how many tops we actually get when I'm done. We just want the bot. We want to lollipop the bottoms because that brings them up and out. So we lollipop the bottoms and we top the tops because topping makes the plant bushier and lollipopping makes the plant taller. So sometimes we want both, right? We want to make the lower branches taller and we want to make the top ones wider because we want to give this one a chance to catch up. So there should be no growth on it. And then we can just keep doing the same thing into the middle of the plant because the middle of the plant isn't ever going to go there later. It'll never end up in our flower garden. So there's no point. That's an interesting leaf. It's got spots around the outside. And, you know, I move through it pretty quickly, but the reality is you're probably going to take your time and enjoy it there's something on this one. So I would say that there is a bug somewhere on this plant. It looks like it might be a, maybe a spider mite, maybe. I would keep my eyes out for it. Anyway, whew. Okay. We don't want any of these lower ones. Nothing's gonna happen. Well, that really is a different looking plant than when I started. And I suspect that these two branches right here will never go anywhere. And I suspect that because I've done this a bunch of times. Ouch, ouch. You can take clones from them though. But this, but this here is now, when I say like you start with a 50 watt plant and you strip it back to 35 watts, this is what I'm talking about. I would bend this branch over to let those, those ones come up. All right, let's trim another one. Looks like I already started this one. So there's a couple in the middle. They might all come up, but they won't be good if they all come up. So I'm gonna leave a couple of the nodes in the middle and I'll take a couple and we can evaluate later and next week. Remember plants don't grow that quick. So we can evaluate next week. The best part about doing this though, and the best part about taking the tops and bending them over and stripping them down is this 400 watt T5 is 400 watts. It's not very hot. It's pretty cool actually. And if you can keep these plants under here for an extra 10 days, man, that is awesome because it, this is a pretty inexpensive light to run. I mean, this is in a kitchen, house AC, keeps it cool. You can tell the plants aren't getting cooked they look good. Um, it does get hot with no air on, but then I'm making a video. So strip the bottoms out. It was a healthy plant. You can hear the leaves pop when I pull them off. Okay. Thin out the middle a little. Bend the tops down, and that is quite a different plant. And here are five plants that look quite a bit different from when I started. And under this light, given another 10 days, these tops will come up, these tops will come up, and it'll be a nice bushy plant because you're looking for that bush, because when you overwater, you get that one top, right? And you get that bean stocking and it doesn't bush out like this. Of course, you also get the speed bumps on the leaves and the chicken claws from overwatering, but the most visible thing really is the bean stocking. So look at these plants.
Here's five nice plants. And if you left them under here and you added some more light, these five plants could each grow 75 watts big. Now all you have to do is finish trimming up the rest of them and um, let them sit under here, but you'll probably need some more light because I know how much light's in flower. So let's go take a look at that now. All right, so let's take a look at Big Red's flower garden now. Okay. All right, so I'm in Big Red's garden. Big Red's garden. And the first thing that you notice is the lights. There's 4,000 watts. And what do I always tell you about 4,000 watts? Well, 1,000 watts is a five by five space. So 4,000 watts should be 10 by 10 because it takes a five by five space to grow four and a half pounds wet or one and a half pounds dry. And if a thousand watt can grow a pound and a half wet, then you need a five by five space, two feet deep, full of buds. Now, this, ah! Now, this is like a six by six space. So, there should have been about 1600 watts over this. Now, marijuana doesn't usually grow indoors in like three foot sticks. You only get about two feet penetration. So there's a couple of problems with this garden. There is not enough plant material by a long shot. If the outside of, these, of this trellis is empty, think about it like a pizza. An 18 inch pizza is almost twice as big as a 16 because of the outside circumference. And if all of these squares around the outside are empty, then that's half the garden. And here's even more that's empty. So you always have to be sure to keep your garden full of plant material because, well, this is a okay looking bud, right? I mean, it's not like big donkey dick bud, but here's a bud that's a couple on top. Now imagine one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 70 more, ah, 70 more of those around the outside. Try to imagine them about a foot and a half lower too because these are really close to the light. And even though when they finish, they can be closer to the light. When you look at these leaves, they're telling you they're small and miniaturized, and they don't look like those big fan leaves that you get. And over here, on these ones, even over here, the, the plants are finishing, yes, but these leaves are being bleached white. They've got tips and stripes from too much light. And maybe if you had twice as much plant material, I don't mean twice as many plants. I mean back in the veg garden when we were bushing the plants out, if they were bushed out, if you had twice the plant material, you would have half the light because light is a function of yield and plant. So if you have half the plant, well, technically you have twice the light. So you either have to raise your lights even further or you have to turn in this case two of them off to get the correct amount of light because if this amount of light should get you six pounds dry that's 18 pounds wet and we both know this is not going to get anything near that now this guy i met at my store several months ago so i kind of helped him save this round because they were starting in veg and from the last round of flower and he's doing better but people don't believe me when i tell you too much light is an easy thing to do because at 4,000 watts this whole room should be filled with bud the lights should stay where they are and the plants should definitely be lower scroll down show them the underside look at all this plant material why because they veg too long and what do I tell you the two complaints about good growers are? The girlfriends hate trimming, the plants got too big for the light. So that's why we trim those other plants in veg. Remember how I said you won't be using those later, those lower branches and leaves? Are we? No. And that's because bugs come from the bottom up. Light only penetrates two feet from the cat through the canopy. And plant count is irrelevant because you should have grown them bigger or vegged them longer. But there's something but there's something else to consider here when you look at this. If you've got a 400 watt veg and plants double in flower, then you should have a thousand watt light 
because if you have a 600 watt veg, you should have a thousand, sorry, if you have a 400 watt veg, you should have a 600 watt flower. And if you have a 600 watt veg, you should have a thousand watt flower. And if you have a 4,000 watt flower, you should have a 2,000 watt veg. Because if you grow 400 watts worth of plant, that's two by four. We saw it on the table in the veg garden. Two by four is this big over to right there, right? And if they double during flower, you're gonna end up with four by four. Four by four is a 600 watt light because five by five is a thousand watt light. Four by four is 16 square feet. Five by five is 25. That's nine square feet more or more than 50% more space than a four by four light, right? Just like a 16 and an 18 inch pizza. So for the next round in here, I would definitely say veg bigger, veg longer. Six plants seems to be okay for me. Maybe eight or 10 plants. I would definitely say pull these lights apart. I would substitute the two smaller lights for two big ones like this. I would keep them just as high. The room is super nice. It's comfortable. I'm not sweating in this room like I was in the veg garden, right? And so this is really nice. What we need to do though is for the same light, we need to triple the amount of tops. And that's why you need more veg light or less flower light, but definitely more canopy, right? Okay, so as a little bonus, I'm gonna show you Big Red's next flower area. Um, for me, I would think he would make it a veg, but you guys are always all about the flower. Everybody wants horsepower. Nobody wants to pay for brakes, which I totally understand, but we already see some of the same problems. The lights, the hoods, while bigger, are still very close together. And though the room is small, I might have put them a little, little further apart. I definitely would not have bothered putting these on any kind of a hanger. I would have hung them directly from the stud, the stud bar. Because these are gonna be 1,000 watt lights. And we saw in the other room how tall marijuana plants get and how, how much light really fills up the space. So if we were to make these two veg, 2,000 watts in veg and 4,000 watts in flower, we would, we would raise the lights and we would have a nice big space. But there is one more thing to consider when we're doing this, and that's venting. Because we really have two choices because this is in a house. And if you watch my vent video, I talk about this more in depth. Now, there's two choices. We can hook this fan filter up to this end of the hood, come out the other end, and up into the attic. But if we do that, we're gonna be venting, what, 600 cubic feet a minute? This whole house is 10,000 cubic feet. This thing would empty the house every 15 minutes, taking 2,500 watts worth of house air conditioner electricity with it. So, if you put this fan filter on the floor and you go through the lights, add a 2,500 watt air conditioner to these two lights, that's 4,500 watts, inappropriate. The alternative is we run both sides of the hoods up to the attic. And if we do that, we now have a sealed garden. We also have the opportunity to use a very small fan, like a little four inch maybe, one of those, or an eight inch duct, like an inline duct fan, like from a hardware store that's like 50 bucks. Why? Because this hood is like 10 cubic feet, let's say. And this hood is 10 cubic feet. And if we have a couple of cubic feet worth of ducting on either side, what, we're at 25 cubic feet? This thing is like 600 cubic feet. If you vent, the, if you use this to cool a couple of hoods, you're gonna be emptying these hoods 25, six, four, 24 times a minute. If 24 times a minute doesn't cool your hood, adding a 10 inch or a 12 inch and doing it every two seconds or every one second isn't gonna matter. What's more important and what we learned in the vent videos is that you buy the insulators to cover your hood. And they can be heavy blankets rated at temperature. The hoods don't usually get more than 150, so you're not gonna start a fire. And you can vent through and you remove like 10 square feet of sheet metal worth of heat. So you raise the hoods and whether you insulate them or not, you vent through them, you don't need a lot. I would say keep a fan filter on the floor, put a 90 on it and blow over the plants. Otherwise, you're gonna take out the glass on both of these, you're not gonna vent them at all, and you're gonna get one of those little 1,000 watt air conditioners in here. Because if you use your house AC and you blow air into this room, air must leave. 
because you can't blow air into a room without some leaving, and you can't have some leave without more going in. It always balances like that. So not too bad. It's coming along, cement floor, couple of lights. We'll see how it all turns out in the next video, hopefully. All right, I'm the Grow Boss. Thanks for watching Garden Rescue here at Big Red's Garden. You can always find my books on eBay, Amazon. And if you have any questions or you want me to evaluate your garden, you can always sign up for a consult on my website, thegrowboss.com. Thanks for watching.